Now, Wellness FX allows users to access their health data online. Jim, is this the case of the Pentagon leading by example? I have to say, all of my doctors are at NYU Hospital, and I absolutely love the fact that I walk in, I scan my hand, and they know more about me than I can remember in the last 10 years. And it's a pleasure, and I feel like I get better health services because of it. Well, you know what's fantastic is the government has, has actually been driving this, this um, movement towards digital health. And if you look at the digital health market right now as far as records, they're fragmented. The biggest company that has the dominant market share is Epic, has about 12%, and is scattered probably in, amongst 20 companies after that. So taking your records from one provider to another has always been really difficult. The government can play a leading role in this. In fact, the VA about three years ago made all of VA records available, which they hadn't done that before. It was called Blue Button, and that actually catalyzed the whole movement. And so this is just a natural progression for the government to do this. And I think this is going to radiate into the uh, the main market. So, so there's clearly two sides to this coin, right? Yeah. On on the one uh, exactly. side... there are two sides to every coin. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. It's 50-50. If you have a one-sided coin, please send it to me. No, I mean, on the one hand, you've got your medical records readily available for all medical professionals. Healthcare is going to be faster. It's going to be more efficient, better. People will benefit from that, surely. On the other hand, it's only a matter of weeks until the Chinese hack the biggest medical database, right? I mean, it's going to be a problem having everyone's medical records on one database that will be surely hacked. Yeah, it's a huge problem, potentially. You have this dilemma. Do you want to have great medical care or do you want to have the Chinese looking at your medical records? That's a, that's a dilemma I guess I could live with. Either way, there is clearly a bull run in sort of the digital health sector. If you look at Fitbit's IPO, they crushed it. The stock has only been going up. But many people argue these wearables. Now, until I was doing the Bloomberg TV Fitness Challenge, wearables sat in a graveyard, which is basically my nightstand. But do you feel positive about sort about many people that are now embracing the the digital space using these wearables? I, I think it's completely on fire. So I don't see you wearing one. Well, it's actually my iPhone. Ah. Ah. So you know, three years ago, a lot of the things that uh, the wearables can do now, they couldn't do because they were having to do everything that was contained on an iPhone in the device, and so now they're pushing all that stuff out as a display, and so that's completely catalyzed it because all it is is the movement and the Bluetooth in it, and it made it really simpler, smaller, waterproof, things like that. So you see just this proliferation. Over 100 companies are wearable uh, that are being funded by digital right now uh, as far as venture capital. And so what you're seeing is, is funding has been on fire last year, and it's the same pace this year. It's probably the biggest venture category right now. Is there something specific within you're most excited about? Sure. You know, it, this sounds strange, but one third of your life is spent, spent in bed, ideally, right? And so uh, they used to have these weird devices that started out and kind of destroyed your love life. You'd put it on your forehead and wear it every single night. And my wife told me after two weeks to take it off. And that, that was... Hang on, what, what device is that? It was a sleep device. It would tell you how... Not to... like a CPAP. You're not talking about like a... So you no, can... no, you'd wear it here. you look like... That CPAP, when I see that, I'm like, that is like sexual repellent. So yeah, this, is. So this, clearly, <laughs> not many people probably have sex with a CPAP on, although I'm sure Maybe it's you happened. don't want to know about that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, so you're talking about something that measures your sleep. Yeah, it'd be here, and it was the Zio. It was a really great technology device. So the one we just got was you implant it in your bed and it is incredibly accurate. And so that's the success factor for wearables. Okay, wearable. but that's for people who are truly tuned in. You've got more obese people in this country than ever, right? They're right. walking themselves, they're, they're not even walking. They're driving themselves from a Taco Bell to a McDonald's to a Burger King. They're not putting that on their bed. No, they're not. But you have things like that measure your respiration. You can have things that um, will measure your movement around the house. You can have telemonitoring. So it's not going to be any one killer device. They found that if you try to do too much stuff in one device, it isn't going to measure it. It has to be super specific. I mean, I'm, I'm more excited about digital health care outside of wearables. You will not have to go to the doctor as often because you can, you can already do it uh, online with Skype or FaceTime. Yeah. Um, your records obviously being shared makes everything more efficient. And eventually this will even drive costs. The, cost. the can, cost of health care will drop. Even the simple fact that you can email your doctor has made a huge impact. Well, there's, there's a company out now that allows you to safely text because email is too long for people and they only use their phones. And so this is all coming to where you're pushing health care all the way out to the periphery so you don't have to go to an office.
Actually, I did that with Wellness FX. You could pull your diagnostics up and you could combine a 20 minute uh, um, consult with a doctor on the fly, just saying, I want somebody to look at this. And it'd be safe, it'd be HIPAA covered. It was great. I never had to go to an office. And think about don't how much you save in. It's cheaper for the doctor to do that. Uh, you don't have to drive there, so you don't spend any money on gas. And you never have to get off mm -hmm. your couch or put down the quesadillas, you know? Quadzilla.